it's time to get less lazy and switch off the ILS. Let's take a look at the visual approach and landing. In many of my videos I've talked about ILS to make landing easier. But I've gotten a lot of requests from people wondering how to land without ILS or autopilot. So it's time for me to teach you just that. To start off, you have to make sure you are roughly lined up with a runway. Meaning it's kind of ahead of you. And if you fly straight you'll eventually be able to see it from your cockpit windows. That does mean that you will have to set some clear sky weather with a relatively high visibility range. You can either use the flight gear map after takeoff to fly to the right point, but you can also use the position menu to put your plane at a certain distance from a runway at a specific speed and altitude. You might want to experiment with the distance input a bit. If you really want to practice final approach, something like 3 to 5 miles would give you enough preparation time for that. But if you want to practice a full approach, you'll need something like a 10 mile distance or even more. Now click this button to teleport to be ready for approach. The disadvantage of using this menu though, is that sometimes you will end up with no engines running or cockpit screens that are not working anymore. In that case you might want to consider doing a normal takeoff and fly to the runway all by yourself. Now there are three main things to focus on. The horizontal alignment, the vertical alignment and your speed. You want to make sure you are aligned both horizontally to the runway and vertically to the glide slope for your entire approach. If you come in from the wrong angle on approach, it won't be so easy to correct the alignment. Horizontal alignment can be hard if you're not making the smallest corrections when you are close to being perfectly aligned. If you're still far away from the runway, you will not be able to perfectly align without ILS. You'll be correcting the alignment continuously as you're getting closer to the runway, which is when you can see more clearly whether you're going to end up on the runway's center line or on the taxiway next to the runway. But as you are getting closer, your corrections will have to be more subtle and precise. To help you holding the correct glide slope, most runways have a few lights right next to the beginning of them. Every one of those lights can either turn white or red, depending on your approach performance. If you are coming in too low, more lights will turn red, and if you are coming in too high, more lights will turn white. All lights red means you are way too low, and all lights white means you are coming in way too high. You know you are on the glide slope path when half of the lights are white and the other half is red. So the last main thing to worry about is speed. I recommend you look up the approach speed of the plane you are flying. When you are about to start your approach, your airspeed should be higher than the approach speed, but as you are descending, gently start slowing down your plane. You don't have to reach the approach speed quickly, as long as you make sure you have reached it well before touchdown. During approach, you will also have to extend the flaps and gear. I am not so sure when to lower the gear exactly, but make sure you've put it down above 1000 feet above the ground. Now flaps are a little more difficult than the landing gear. If you bring them down too soon, you might end up flying too high or too slow, but if you bring them down too late, you might have trouble maintaining the necessary lift for approach. A good guideline might be, extend the flaps one more step if you find that you have to lift the nose of your plane too much. Because you are slowing your plane down, you will start to notice that you have to lift your plane's nose up more and more to stay on the glide slope. If that's the case, you should add some flaps. But only apply the flaps slowly, because you typically don't want your plane's pitch to drop below zero. And that's pretty much it. I have a few tutorials about flaring and braking after touchdown, so be sure to check those out as well. Thanks for watching this tutorial, and I hope you'll stick around for the next one.